What is Splunk Log Observer? Let's start by looking at some basic facts about the product and then see how to interact with your data that's been sent in and what you can do with Splunk Log Observer. With the help of this video, you will be able to identify how metrics, traces, and logs are related, examine some use cases for Log Observer, list six ways to send your logs to Splunk Observability Cloud, navigate the Log Observer UI, list three ways to find logs of interest, explain how to find trends in your log data, and facilitate team collaboration with saved queries. First, what is Splunk Log Observer? Log Observer is a product in Splunk Observability Cloud that allows DevOps teams, SREs, and developers to query logs to detect and investigate the root cause of infrastructure and applications problems. While logs tell you what is causing the problem, other classes of data, such as metrics and traces, lets you know that you have a problem and where the problem exists. These three classes of data, metrics, traces, and logs, make up the three pillars of observability. Splunk Observability Cloud automatically ingests and correlates metrics, traces, and logs to provide a seamless experience between infrastructure monitoring, application performance monitoring, and Log Observer. Let's take a look. So an SRE troubleshooting a performance issue in IM can view the related logs by selecting the tile on the related content bar. And a developer who is debugging an application in APM can view those related logs. Take the use case of a developer who is debugging an application. At first, she might receive a critical alert that a particular service is emitting a lot of errors. She takes a closer look at the details of the alert that was triggered. She wants to see where exactly this error is happening, so she clicks Troubleshoot, and that opens APM. A trace indicates that somewhere between the checkout service and Buttercup payments, there's a payment service that is experiencing a lot of errors. So to investigate that further, she can either click to see the relevant log messages for that service, or she can investigate the specific trace that was having issues. To do that, she selects Traces, and then selects a specific trace of concern. She notices some longer than usual execution times. So now she can view logs for this specific trace with this trace ID. She selects the button to continue the investigation in Log Observer. So in general, your starting point will not be Log Observer. You come to Log Observer having already identified the problem, maybe from your metrics-based detectors or from your Kubernetes cluster. If the problem is with a specific Kubernetes node, pod, or container, you can view log messages for that specific object. And if it's with a specific APM service or trace, you can navigate to the log messages for that service or for that trace. You can also perform root cause analysis of cloud instance problems by navigating to the logs for that specific cloud instance. So Log Observer is often used alongside infrastructure monitoring and application performance monitoring. For more about how related content can help you seamlessly move between key views in Observability Cloud, visit Splunk Docs at docs.splunk.com slash observability slash get dash started slash related content dot html. Before getting into some of the details about what you can do with Log Observer, it's important to first understand where Log Observer's data comes from. Log Observer gets its data from you. To start using Log Observer, you need to send your log data to Splunk Observability Cloud. Log data comes from your hosts, your containers, cloud providers, resources, and applications. You must decide whether you want to see logs from every data source, only one, or a combination of data sources. The more complete your log collection in Log Observer, the more effective your use of Log Observer will be for root cause analysis. Select the platforms for the hosts, 
and for the containers that you want to import logs from, and follow the instructions in the guided setup. You will use the Splunk distribution of the Open Telemetry Collector to capture logs from your resources and applications. Do the same in the Cloud Integrations section. You can also send log data into Splunk Observability Cloud using REST API, application instrumentation using various language libraries, or existing FluentD or FluentBit deployments. Note that if you have a Splunk Platform instance, you can use the Log Observer Connect integration to see and query your data with Splunk Log Observer. So although that data never leaves your Splunk Platform instance, you will be able to query that data from Log Observer via Secure Connection. To find out more about setting up Splunk Log Observer, including details on configuring FluentD, as well as setting up Log Observer Connect, visit Splunk Docs at docs.splunk.com slash observability slash logs slash logs.html. Pause and consider the ways that you will send log data to Splunk Observability Cloud. Once you have completed data setup, you will be able to see your data. The Log Observer is a one window application. You will do all your work within this single screen. There are four main areas. The content control bar is at the top. This is where you manage your filters, time windows, and search time rules. Below that is the timeline and histogram area where you add analysis functions and view the results. The default is to count the number of log entries received per time window and group by severity. The logs table shows all the logs received in the currently selected time frame. If any filters are applied, then the logs shown will be limited by the filters. Since we left off with our developer looking at logs for a specific trace, this is filtered by the trace ID. Finally, the fields panel shows all the fields that are present on any entry currently in the logs table. You can see the number of occurrences of that field in the current log set. If you select one log event, you will see details in the log detail panel. Notice that certain fields have been automatically extracted for JSON formatted data. Now that you're sending in complete log data to Splunk Observability Cloud and you can navigate Log Observer, it's time to learn how to interact with your data. Let's get into some of the details around what you can do with Log Observer. Since you often come to Log Observer having already identified the problem, you might already know what logs you're interested in finding. To find the logs of interest, use the Add Filter button in the Content Control bar to filter by a field value or keyword. In the opening example, the developer received an alert that the payment service was experiencing errors. She could come to Log Observer directly and add two filters for the severity type error and the service name payment service. After adding the appropriate filter or keyword, the timeline will adjust and the logs table will show you just those relevant logs. If you don't yet know what you're searching for or the exact field name to filter by, the fields list can help you browse through all available metadata and describe the fields in your data as they're coming in. For example, if you're interested in currency data, you can browse the list or you can search to see the exact field name. When you find a log message that's of interest to you, click on it to see all the details. LiveTail is another method of finding or exploring log data. With LiveTail, you see a streaming view of logs as they come into Observability Cloud. It responds to filters the same way that other log data can be filtered. You can also have greater visibility of what you're trying to find by using keyword highlighting. Highlight additional words as needed. You can adjust the incoming log speed by scrolling the table to freeze the table view, using the logs per second slider, or by stopping it completely. You might opt to keep LiveTail open in a separate tab 
to monitor code pushes, or to verify changes to monitored systems. There are other ways that you can either transform your data or ensure that your log data can be easily found according to your needs. For example, if you have incoming log messages that contain a user ID that's not already associated with a field, you can extract that information and add it to a user ID field by creating a field extraction rule. Select a log in the logs table that contains the values you need to extract and select extract field to create your field extraction rule. You can also create it from scratch. Go to Settings, Logs Pipeline Management, and create a new processing rule for field extraction. You can also create field copy rules and field redaction rules, which mask sensitive data such as credit card information or other personally identifiable information. For a deeper dive and hands-on experience with pipeline management, enroll in the Using Log Observer course. There, you can also learn how to create metrics from your logs, which can then be embedded into charts, and how to set up long-term archival of your logs with infinite logging rules. Another method of making your data even more accessible is to assign an alternative name to a field through field aliasing. Note that in Log Observer Connect, you cannot do anything in pipeline management nor live tail unless you have a full Log Observer entitlement in Observability Cloud. Log Observer Connect customers can use field aliasing as an alternative to field copy. To learn more about managing the logs pipeline, visit Splunk documentation at docs.splunk.com slash observability slash logs slash pipeline.html. Besides finding or transforming your data, you can also use Log Observer to find trends. If you are looking for trends in your log data, use the timeline controls to perform aggregation functions. The default is to count the number of log entries received per time window and group by severity. In our example, the developer might want to see if there are any trends based on currency. She could change the aggregation, and enter the appropriate field. And group by currency. Notice that the chart automatically changes to a line chart. Log Observer can also be used to improve cross-team collaboration. If you know that someone has already performed queries that you're currently interested in running, you can use the list of saved queries. Conversely, if you have performed a query that you know will be valuable to other members of your team, save it and make it public. You can also choose to save your queries privately instead of publicly. Our developer would like to save this analysis and make it the default query on page load. She first saves the analysis and then selects the Save Query menu to make it the default. The house icon confirms that it is now the default on page load. You are now ready to navigate and use Log Observer for faster troubleshooting, root cause analysis, and better cross team collaboration. For a full list of all Log Observer features, visit Splunk documentation at docs.splunk.com/slash observability slash logs slash intro dash to dash logs.html. If you want to take a deeper dive and get hands-on practice with Log Observer, enroll in the instructor-led course using Splunk Log Observer.